Apparently, it's Tom Cruise's birthday today. I mean, at least that's the post that Christopher McCoy, his frequent uh, co-creator in many of Tom Cruise's projects, uh, that's the statement that he posted recently on Twitter saying happy 60th birthday to Tom Cruise. But the main focus of this video is highlighting the image that he posted. And it was of Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt hanging from the top of a biplane that is flying while flipped upside down. Now, again, to inform people what a biplane is, it's an early type of aircraft with two pairs of wings, one above the other. You know, it's if, if anything, I feel like kids who grew up in the 90s or whatever probably would be familiar with the aesthetic of the plane, you know, watching cartoons like Tailspin. Because it looks like it looks like a smaller version of a tailspin type plane. But anyway, it's pretty insane <laughs> that even in his 60s, well, obviously he wasn't in his 60s at the time, but nearing 60, he's still doing stunts like this. Willing to actually risk his life to provide entertainment because he's an actor and that's what actors are supposed to do. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? And again, this just continues to sell this movie. And it was a smart tweet to make because not only are you acknowledging his birthday, but during the acknowledgement, you're giving people another shot of the film and specifically of a crazy stunt that this guy is doing. Which is why, side note, there should have always been a category for stunt people in the Academy Awards. But, you know, those award shows really don't matter anymore anyway. But yeah, this is a crazy stunt to do. And when you see this, you're wondering, what were the events leading up to this specific scene? Like, how was he chasing... A, a suspect or an enemy down and it'll try to get him to stop the plane and when he didn't manage he was had to grab onto the wings of the biplane I mean again it gets you imagining what this the events leading up to this scene what happens during this scene and what happens right after like it gets you thinking and more curious about the film which again is why it's a clever post just in the promotion of the film and then you also highlighting you know this is somebody at 60 being as a big a star as he is but still willing to do things like this meanwhile you got plenty of holly weirdos today who have less years in the business who has far less success and yet they refuse to freaking work out for a movie you know they get they get paid to play pretend. About only 2% of them are able to make a living out of it. So they're even more lucky and privileged. But yet, they just can't do the bare minimum to prepare for roles. Meanwhile, this dude 30 plus years into his career and still willing to do crazy stunts like this at the age of 60. And one, one of the... Uh, funny sort of reaction to this was to see someone compare this to Sonic the Hedgehog because in part two you had Tails flying a plane just like this but that was an animation <laughs> and that and Sonic was like standing on that plane in an animation meanwhile he's uh, on this plane in real life <laughs> so he's doing what freaking animated characters are doing but again man this this is what it's all about when you're just about entertaining the people because you know once he got that blowback particularly in 05 where he was arguing with an apparent sexual predator and Matt Lawyer about prescription drugs and, and Scientology ever since then he hasn't said anything you know the most that I hear about his beliefs is from other people 
And again, <laughs> uh, you still see oh, crazy Tom Cruise, weird Tom Cruise. Well, 20 years ago, when people knew less about these Harley weirdos, that was probably a, a valid statement. But nowadays, it's, he's like the most sane box office attraction. You know, in fact, he's the only individual that is a box office attraction because all the other attractions are based on tentpole films and established IPs, not an individual person or movie star like it once was. But again, uh, this is what he's pouring off for Mission Impossible, The Dead Reckoning Part 1. I can only imagine when Part 2 comes around what stunts he's pulled off for that movie because I think the rumors have stated that these movies will be the last Mission Impossible films and so I fully expect for this to end with a, a big bang that will probably actually be satisfying you know, unlike a lot of conclusions to a lot of other movies and even TV shows. But yeah, th this is just absolutely bonkers that he's willing to do this. But, you know, to be fair, it's not just his willingness. Apparently, he's always just been an adrenaline and junkie. He just happened to be a adrenaline and junkie that became a movie star. And so... If anything, he's just getting to indulge in things that he probably would have been doing if he ne never became famous. He probably just would have became a a stunt guy or an adrenaline and junkie guy, you know, on, on his days off at work. But anyway, here is uh, another crazy stunt, and it really makes you imagine what happened. Uh, during this scene and the the events leading up to the scene and you know this is the sort of advertisement that most people would prefer with movies you know not telling us whether or not Tom Cruise character would want to have a relationship with this aircraft <laughs> or any other nonsense like that is just oh the, the the biggest talking point would be oh Will we get returning characters from the previous film? You know, will Max make a return from the first Mission Impossible? Like, that's the conversation of that's revolving around the movie and, and the crazy stunts like this. Not who's tonguing who or scissoring who. But, anyway. This is why I wish they just are canceling based on the Scientology. Since, you know, people like bringing it up. And then, with his ego and Elon Musk's willingness, because they're already having that uh, SpaceX project together, they would probably get together and start an alternative to Hollywood, which would be even better. And then I could probably actually support those movies. But yeah, looking forward to Mission Impossible 7 and catching it on the high seas of the internets. <laughs>